Captain's log. It has been approximately two days since our voyage began, and it already feels like two months. Our guest, the necromancer, brought with him a group of undead zombies who have managed to overrun the ship. Victor managed to shoot a few of them into space, but it had little effect. He and Jack spoke with the necromancer about keeping them locked up in his quarters, and he agreed to do so, begrudgingly. Score one for us. Oh, did I forget to mention Jack is on board? Turns out he managed to attach himself to the ship as it took off, and Victor found him hanging on a hatch last night. Andy. Unfortunately, things went south from there. I led an away team down to a new planet to find some weapons for the ship. Yuri said there were no life forms, which was true, if you don't count the androids. Welcome to the Google Colony. I am the Concierge, and I am programmed to be delighted <laughs> to meet all of your needs and desires. She told us to follow her, and, like fools, we agreed. One of our agents, Simon, managed to return to the ship and warn Jack about what had happened to us. Where are the rest of them? Where's Grafton? They took him. Oh dear. They're going to need someone to lead a rescue mission. Someone familiar with robots and androids. And it just so happened we had another convenient stowaway. I was in the air shaft, having helped Mr. and Mrs. Wigglebottom reunite in love. The robot, I mean, not a robot, was given a new away team and returned to Simon's last coordinates. Looking for clues in a junkyard, one agent, Hector the Well Endowed, cut her hand, which awoke some kind of helper android. A robot will help you. Your hand must be treated. I will take it this way to be amputated immediately. No Though they managed to elude him, it was clear they were going to need to disguise themselves as robots if they wished to avoid detection. The away team was looking for a place called Sanctuary, where my own team was being held. They came across a worker drone who promised to help them if they would testify at his sentience trial to determine if he should be given the freedom to be an autonomous unit or something. The trial was administered by the concierge. I wish to be called Marvin. We shall see about that. After a very bungled attempt to prove he was intelligent and possessed consciousness, this isn't going as expected. The concierge gave her judgment. You have met the absolute minimal requirements. <laughs> Though he was granted his freedom, he did not know the location of Sanctuary. But he knew who might. A group known as the Body Mod Gang in Oil Can Alley. They were robots who traded android parts for human body parts, as sort of reverse cyborgs. They would give him the info, but they wanted a trade first. Now we got a hand, we got a leg, we got a jaw! Show them what you got. With this, <laughs> like a hole in a brick wall. <laughs> Hector was the first to volunteer, and others followed. Soon they knew the location of Sanctuary and headed out. But once they found it, they had to battle their way in. A rap battle. The Rapabot chose to rap as C-3PO. I'm afraid you've been back once you've been in time. Three more pairs again. He knows if I'm old steel rocks. Three more Simon and a cast. Call me get disintegrated. A disco and God dog's data created. While our challenger, Simon, was forced to rap as the T-800 Terminator. And with that, they gained entrance to Sanctuary. What getting in, however, was the easy part. Once inside, an android called the Keeper let slip what Sanctuary was really for, using human minds to power the colony's mainframe. And when they ran out of humans, they used other robots. So even though the away team was disguised, she still had orders to process them, by way of freezing them for later. Agent Dash craftily used his newly acquired cyborg hand to protect the others, while Hector delivered the coup de grace by fucking a hole in the keeper with her new crotch. Thank you, Body Mod Gang. My input-output device really hurts. The away team finally found our frozen bodies, and after unlocking the defrost mechanism, we were freed. But the concierge was not done with us yet. She saw humans as nothing but violent, hateful creatures and was going to eradicate us once and for all. Unless we convinced her of humanity's good traits. We created robots! We created you! So in a way, we're like your god. We were doing a very good job. When she came down personally, we were pretty sure she was going to just kill us all. Haha, <laughs> worry not! I have been programmed to be kind of a pushover. And your feeble attempts and a decent argument throughout this entire thing have warmed in my heart. Not a robot also seemed to have a change of heart, so to speak. 
I have realized that I am actually a human who really appreciates robots. I will stay here and teach these robots the joys of being a human. That's fine by me. If we never got what we came for, most of us were alive. Most importantly, me. Things were definitely looking up for good old Grafton. You can't go wandering off like that. <laughs> I promise I don't want to keep you in my court. <laughs> This looks very familiar. In fact, I lost something just like this about three, <laughs> three millennia ago. <laughs> right about the time that I met. Graf! 